Hey there, Rock and Roll Junkies. Charlie here with another Grey Wolf review. This week, Black Sabbath with their classically underrated album, Born Again. Now, can you see the shirt? Can you see the shirt? Gotta make sure the shirt's in there. Good shirt. All right, got it. Good stuff. So, Born Again. Now this is one of my favorite albums ever. I feel it's extremely underrated. People either just disregard its existence or just outright put it down, and I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's justified. And I know why people put it down, and it's because it's not a classic Aussie era album by Black Sabbath. So people put it down, and here's the thing, I love this album because number one, Ian Gillen is on this, and if you've seen my Deep Purple review, you know that I just worship anything Ian Gillen does. And well, let's see, number, number two, is that basically for me, for me, I don't really consider anything past this to be Black Sabbath. I feel like everything after this is good, but it's just, to me, the Tony Iommi experience after this. And I know Geezer would come back later on, but it's not the same. Uh, he came on, but they, he wasn't there forever. It just it wasn't the same. Everything past this to me is just Tony Iommi experience. 13, I do like 13. I do consider that canon with Black Sabbath. But you know what I mean? Like for the most part, until the reunion, I don't consider anything past Born Again to be Sabbath. And that's just me. That's just how I am. So let's get into this album, Born Again. Now, Born Again was released August 7th, 1983. Let's get in with the first track, which is Trashed. Now, I love this song. I love the uh, the intro scream. It's got great drums by Mr. Bill Ward coming back for this one. Great drums. It has a real loud bass. I love the speed of the song. Uh, it has a great solo. The production on this, though, is not the best. You can say that about the whole album. The album just sounds really muddy, but I feel that it adds to like the atmosphere of the album. It really just adds to you know what the songs are going for, and you know because I've complained about bad production in the past, but I feel this is it's to like it's it's to uh, its advantage. Uh, this song, if you remember, if you were there at the time. This song actually made it to the PMRC's <laughs> Filthy 15. You know, 15 songs that Tipper Gore and Friends put on a list of songs that should be banned, destroyed, gone. This was on the Filthy 15 list for drug and alcohol, alcohol use, which is makes it even cooler, right? I mean. This song is just so evil, it should be banned. It must be amazing. That being said, I think it's a great song. Ian Gillen sounds great on it. And it's just an amazing song. Let's go ahead to number two, which is Stonehenge. And this isn't really a song, it's more of like an interlude or an intro. But that being said, it has, it's pretty cool. It has these weird effects going for it. It's really eerie. There's keyboards. Um, it's pretty spooky. <laughs> Thinking of things to say about this, it's not really a song. You hear like, oh, a heartbeat. I really like that, the heartbeat. And then it just as the song goes on, it just grows and grows and grows. You just hear bum bum, bum bum, bum bum. I just fills you with this like suspense, and that basically leads into the next track, which is number three, which is my favorite song of the album, "Disturbing the Priest." This is fantastic song. If anything came out of the collaboration of Ian Gillen and Deep Purple, it's this. This is one of the greatest things that could have come from that combination. This song is just so 
evil sounding throughout. Ian Gillen is just like laughs and his screams in the beginning are so evil. It is so like, <laughs> it's just so perfect. So perfect. And his just delivery, Ian Gillen's delivery throughout this whole song is great. Um, the bass is just real loud. And I love it, I love it. I know that, it, it, I think Geezer did that, make the bass louder than normal when producing it. But I, I love the bass. The bass is my, bass, bass guitar is my favorite instrument. And Geezer Butler is my favorite bassist of all time. So, this is just like heaven to me, to hear the bass super loud. I just think uh, the drums, the drums are great. The screams overall are fantastic, on point, just so haunting throughout the whole song. Uh, I think it's, it's, you know, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool song, just perfect. Through and through, my favorite song on the album. Tony just comes up with this evil riff. It has great lyrics. You know, typical, like, this is very close to Sabbath sounding lyrics because you know Ian Gillen's known to do different type of stuff and he will do different type of things on this album but for the most part this is very Sabbath sounding lyric wise Bill's drums are just so heavy on this and then you know it's just completed completed the song just ends with his sharp vocals and those evil just maniacal laughs come back and screams and just everything comes together, the bass, the drums, the riffs, the guitar, his screams come together and this is perfect ending. It's just a perfect song. And then we go into number four, which is The Dark, which much like Stonehenge, it's not a song, it's more of another intro interlude. But it's again it's pretty cool, it has bass effects, it's pretty eerie like the last one. There's supposedly a flute on this. I don't hear it. I, I mean I think it's there, but I don't hear it. I love how the riff just builds up on this one into the next song, which is like the heartbeat of the last one. It's and then basically we go into the next song, which is Paradise City. I mean, uh, Zero the Hero. What's the difference? Anyways, this song is great. It's all doomy and mysterious, and the drums here are great. There is a just nice bass throughout. Again, by Mr. Geezer Butler. Oh my god, I just love Ian's delivery on this song, the chorus, just the way he sings everything. Zero, the hero! I just love that chorus. So cool. Uh, Tony Iommi's solo sounds just so, so good here. It's like, I feel like at one point it's like kind of like isolated, the solo, and then you just hear like around the solo, you hear the drums and the bass, and the solo just in the middle. And it just feels, it, it sounds just so cool. So cool. I just love this song. Zero and a hero. It, it sounds like it could have been like a theme song to like a TV show or something like in the 80s or like a movie. I think it's great. I think it's super cool. I love it. Let's go into number six, which is Digital Bitch. Great song, albeit lyrically, it is somewhat not uh, common territory for Sabbath. This is something that's very Ian Gillen. It's a song about a girl who her father is rich because he like sells computers and she is like a brat or a bitch and it's pretty simplistic in that nature. But I really like the song. I really like the song because again, Ian Gillen. I think he sounds great on this. His delivery is great. Bill Ward on this is great. It has a great riff and it's just really fast. It has some nice speed to this song. So I just love this song. Through and through. Perfect song. Let's go into number seven, the title track. This is Born Again. Now Born Again is a slow song. A slow kind of ballad-esque, but not really. It's uh, Ian's, Ian Gillen's voice here. The sound so clear and just so passionate. And it's just, the song is just beautiful, yet sad, and yet dark. And it's just so good. And Ian Gillen's voice is the best during the chorus. When he's singing, born again, it just sounds so good. And then that solo near the end is just perfect. I mean, this ends the song so, but so, but so perfectly. I, I just love it. I love this song. We move on to number eight, which is Hotline. 
This one is another Ian Gillan-esque song. Not really, yeah, normal uh, Sabbath lyrically this type of theme. But it's, I think it's a great song. It has a great opening with those riffs and the drums. I didn't like this song at first. When I first started listening to this album, these two last songs I didn't really care for. I didn't care for them. And I just, I, through time, they both grew up. Through time, they both grew up. And you now I think they're great songs. And I feel like we should give these two songs just a chance because I feel they're great songs. They're just not. They're just not very Sabbath-esque, and I guess that's why people don't like them. And I guess that's why I didn't like it because I expected some something Sabbath-esque. And I didn't get that. I expected something like disturbing the priest. Right, but I got it like this. But this is a super cool song either way. I think it's just a total rocker. Uh, Hearing Geezer's bass on this is amazing. It's just totally like groovy bass. I love it. There's two solos on this, both by Tony at different parts, and they're both great. Uh, there's lots of screams from Ian Gillen on this one, which is just great because I love hearing Ian's just screams. And <sighs> the lyrics again are totally Ian Gillen. This is just a great song. A great song. Now the last song, number nine. Keep it warm. This is another one, as I said, I didn't like it at first, but over time it's grown on me. It's, it's like a bluesy style ballad. Kind of, like this would be something that's kind of like deep purplish. Uh, I love the drums and the bass on this. I think they're fantastic. Um, I love the solo. I love how it, just, uh, it starts off slow and then it speeds up and it slows back down. And I think it's a great song. But what I have to say about this song is, you know how I like, I like albums have like a big, big, big finish. I don't feel this song gives the album a big finish. I feel that maybe if you were to move it with the last song and make Hotline the last song, I feel that maybe that would give it a big finish. But then other times I'm like listening to this album and I feel that uh, Keep It Warm ends the album perfectly. So it really it's, depends on what day I'm hearing this album, how I'm feeling that day, because there are times where I feel it's perfect as is, and there are other times where I'm like, maybe it should have a bigger finish. So it's really up to interpretation how you feel about this album. I think, you know, it's great either way, but overall this album, I think, is perfect. I think it's perfect. I think everything about it is perfect. The album cover, which supposedly made one of the members of the band uh, want to throw up when they saw it, I just think that's, that's even more cool. It just makes it even more metal, man. I love that album cover, by the way. That's one of my favorite album covers ever. Ever. I love it. It's just so evil looking. It was, that's the point. And I just think the whole collaboration between Ian Gillen and Black Sabbath was great. I know it was just a one-time thing. And sadly, basically, this album, more of the tour than the album, the tour basically ruined his voice, basically. Because he screams so much on this that by the time Deep Purple got back together, Perfect Strangers, there's barely any screams on that. I think there's like one, and it's very weak. This, this tour basically drove him into the ground vocally and kind of damaged him. He got it back later on, but it was never really the same. This is basically the peak of his vocal prowess, his screaming, which is kind of like sad at one point, but then it's kind of cool they have, you know, that disturbing the pricks was one of the last things he did when he had like perfect screams. Overall, I think this is a great album. I love this album. I think it's a perfect album. Perfect, perfect album. People should look into it. I think it's very underrated. I don't think it's fair that people, you know, put it down just because Ozzy's not on it. I think it's a great album. That's all for this album. Now let's move on to my pick of the vid. For this pick of the vid, my pick is... Armored Saint with their album, Symbol of Salvation. Great album, great band. If you like Sabbath, you should look into this band. They're a very good band. They're an amazing band, actually. Live, they're even better than on studio. I saw them live, and I think they're just fantastic. Uh, John Bush, as you know, he was in Anthrax for a while. But this was the band he was in prior to Anthrax, and if you like you know, just heavy metal. These guys are just as heavy metal as can be in the traditional sense. 
but they're just fantastic band. Look into that. If you've heard it, do it again. That's all for this episode, guys. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment what you think on Born Again. Subscribe for more reviews. With that being said, remember to stay metal, stay devil, stay evil. All right.